I'm Sean Guthrie, and as a realtor, a business owner, and a former financial advisor, I love to help people out with real estate, finance, business, and more. Part of that more is getting you prepared to take your real estate licensing exam. This video is about deed fundamentals. I'll cover what a deed is, delivery and acceptance, things usually found on a deed, requirements of a deed, and some special Star Wars themed practice questions. This video is covering the fundamentals, but stay tuned for more videos about deeds, including the types of deeds, warrants, and much more. One thing that we have to clear up first is the difference between title and deed. You can think of title as what you got when you purchased the property, and the deed as proof that you got it. Sometimes people use title and deed interchangeably, but they're two different things entirely. In fact, title isn't really a thing per se. It's not a tangible thing. It's more like an abstract set of ideas. And when I first heard about this, it was kind of confusing, this nebulous topic. It kind of felt like a fugazi, it's a fugazi, it's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's fairy dust. It's not on the elemental chart. It's not freaking real but it just refers to what you'll hear time and time again is the legal bundle of rights that come with the property. This includes things like the right to use it, the right to exclude other people from it, the right to sell it, these kind of abstract terms that you get when you get the property. Think of a deed as like a certificate of ownership, a proof of purchase, or a receipt. Another area to really nail down and get distinct is grantor versus grantee. I gave you a similar hint in the offer and acceptance video, but if you haven't seen that, just think of grantor and giver, the end of those two words kind of sound similar. Grantor, giver, grantee, receiver. Once I started using that hint, I never forgot it, so hopefully that works for you as well. Title is that legal bundle of rights, and the deed is the legal instrument used by the grantor, the giver, to transfer title of real estate to the grantee, the receiver. Simply having a deed is not enough. You need to have delivery and acceptance. Let's come up with a crazy example. Let's say that you own a toxic waste dump. Like I said, something crazy, but you're having the problems that normally come with having a toxic waste dump. So you wanna make your problems someone else's problems. So you write up a deed, you're trying to transfer it. Is it that easy to transfer the property? No, you not only have to deliver the deed, the other party has to voluntarily accept it. There's a special exam tip about recording. Recording happens when you say go to the clerk of the courts to enter the deed into public record. The recording is not actually required. However, it is strongly recommended because what you're doing when you record it is you're giving constructive notice. That means you're letting the world know that this property was transferred and that the title has transferred to you. Here are some of the things normally found on a deed. Now, if I don't mention these specifically, that means I'm going to cover it in the next section, which is requirements of a valid deed. So don't worry about that. I'll cover it in the, the next section. You have the names of the grantor and the grantee, consideration, the interest or the estate being conveyed, exceptions and reservations, deed restrictions. Deed restrictions are private restrictions as opposed to public restrictions, which would be like government regulations. Private restrictions can include like the height of buildings in a neighborhood. It can include the number of vehicles that you have on the driveway at any given time, or it can be the number of bedrooms that you're allowed to have in the house. Those would be private deed restrictions. Appurtenances. I like to think of these as distant cousins of fixtures. They're similar, but not quite. I did do a video about fixtures. I'll link to it. Check it out. Appurtenances include things like septic tanks or sheds, parking lot spaces when it comes to like condos, legal description, voluntary delivery and acceptance like we talked about, signature of the grantor and two witnesses, and words of conveyance. Going more in depth about conveyance, these are the words that talk about the actual transfer of the property. Conveyance clauses. 
Conveyance clauses describe the details of the transfer. There are four principal conveyance clauses, the granting clause, habendum clause, redendum clause, and tenendum clause. Say that three times fast. The granting clause, or the premises clause, is the only required one. It contains intentions, the name of the parties, the property, and describes consideration. The habendum clause describes the type of estate being conveyed. It's above the scope of this video, but things like fee simple, life estates. An important exam tip is you'll often see the words to have and to hold. For example, to have and to hold during their natural life. The redendum clause or the reserving clause is where you're gonna find the restrictions and limitations like the deed restrictions. And the tenendum clause is where you'll find property that's being conveyed in addition to the land. Requirements of a valid deed. You need to have a competent grantor and a legitimate grantee. The grantor must be living, legal age, mentally competent, and the grantee must be living or have legal, what's called legal existence, but they don't have to actually be of legal age or mentally competent. It has to be in writing and that has to do with the statute of frauds. The deed has to contain a legal description and the granting clause, like I mentioned earlier, is the only one that's required. It must also include consideration. When it comes to consideration, just think of it as something of value, and it can be monetary. It must be signed by the grantor. Something of note, the deed has to be signed by the grantor, but it doesn't have to be signed by the grantee. It must be acknowledged. Acknowledgement means that it's a free and voluntary act. You can receive it without any undue pressure or from being threatened or strong-armed. It's of your own free will. And of course, it has to be delivered and accepted. Now on to the practice questions. These are to test your knowledge of what you've learned. I'll read the question, then the answer choices, and this is to help people out who may be just listening to the audio only. Then I'll give you five seconds, and I highly encourage you to pause the video to work out an answer for yourself so you get the most out of these questions. And then I'll read the answer. Number one, Obi-Wan Kenobi wants Luke Skywalker to have legal title to his property. When does the title officially transfer? A, when the deed is voluntarily delivered and accepted. B, when the deed is recorded by the county. C, once taxes are paid. D, once doc stamps are paid. The answer is A, when the deed is voluntarily delivered and accepted. Remember, that's one of those requirements of a valid deed. Two, Chewbacca tells Han Solo that he needs to provide acknowledgement. What does this mean? A, this is another term for a property tax receipt. B, it is the act of declaring the execution of the instrument freely. C, this is when the title company conducts a title search for validation. Or D, at least verbal communication of deed delivery. Answer B is the act of declaring the execution of the instrument freely. In other words, you did it on your own free will. It wasn't because of being threatened or coerced into doing it. Three, Darth Vader sells a unit in the Death Star and the deed says it comes with a spaceship parking spot. The parking spot would be likely considered what? A, consideration, B, deed restriction, C, fixture, D, appurtenance. D, appurtenance. The examples I used were septic tanks, sheds, and parking spots. Four, Yoda's deed says he can't build a liquor store on his property. What is this type of rule called? A, commercial restriction. B, deed limitation. C, deed restriction. D, strategic land management. Deed restriction is the correct answer, C. Five, Jabba the Hutt is looking at a deed and sees the words to have and to hold. What clause is he most likely looking at? A, granting, B, premises, C, season, D, habendum. D, 
D. Habendum. Whenever you see the words to have and to hold, you're more than likely being asked about the Habendum Clause. I hope you learned a lot and you did well on those practice questions. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment because it really helps the channel out and that means I'll be able to make even more content for you. Thanks and I will see you in the next video.